Capital punishment is one of the most controversial issues around the world, as many nations can't decide whether or not it's okay to punish someone for a crime by ending their life. Specifically in the United States, capital punishment has proven to be a never-ending debate topic. Yet no one really understands how capital punishment has played a part in our nation's history, as well as how capital punishment is carried out through our judicial system. Capital punishment has a long evolving history in the United States, as it has been accepted and enforced in the United States since the colonial era. While writing the Constitution, the Founding Fathers wrote with the intention of protecting the inalienable rights of the United States citizens. Some of these rights include freedom of speech, right to bear arms, right against unwarranted search and seizures, and right to trial by jury. The Founders also included the right to not receive cruel and unusual punishment, which is located in the Eighth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. The United States at the time of its founding did not believe that capital punishment violated the Eighth Amendment. However, the violation of the Eighth Amendment is one of the strongest arguments against capital punishment today. Capital punishment used to be carried out by hangings and firing squads, but as more time passed and the need to make sure capital punishment was carried out painlessly arose, methods of execution have changed. For a brief moment in time, the United States carried out executions using an electrical chair, but now the most currently used form of execution is lethal injection. The United States government has never stood behind the permanent abolition of capital punishment. However, the United States did ban capital punishment once in its history in 1972 because of the Supreme Court's decision in Furman v. Georgia. The Supreme Court decided to prohibit capital punishment because it concluded that there was no consistency in the application process of the death penalty throughout the United States. The death penalty was being applied differently to people of different races, even those people who committed similar crimes. The ban on capital punishment was lifted in 1976 after the Supreme Court decision in Gregg v. Georgia, which mandated capital sentencing procedures that would ensure that the inalienable rights of citizens would be protected. These procedures directly relate to the 5th and 14th Amendments of the United States Constitution, which together are known as the Due Process Clause. Federal and state trial procedures differ because each state has their own rules and procedures. But one thing that both the federal and state judiciary share is a mandate that the rights under the Due Process Clause must be enforced and carried out. Expert Robert McKenna emphasized what due process is and where it's located in the Constitution. So due process is a, um, a legal concept that's derived from the U.S. Constitution um, under the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution that guaranteed that Congress could not deprive a person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Um, following the Civil War, the 14th Amendment was ratified, and the 14th Amendment essentially said that no state shall deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. And really what both of those provisions mean uh, is that government must follow a process that's fair, um, gives a person notice about what they're going to be deprived of, and then allow them the opportunity to um, protect themselves from the government deprivation. So um, the question is what process is due a person in order to uh, for the government to take away their life, their liberty, or their property. The Fifth Amendment states that no person should be held without an arraignment and that they cannot be tried for the same crime twice. More importantly, the Fifth Amendment states that a criminal has the right to trial by jury and that the right to not commit self-incrimination. The Due Process Clause specifically states that the government cannot deprive a person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The Fourteenth Amendment states similar rights that are found in the Fifth Amendment except that this amendment applies all these rights to the state governments. More importantly, the 14th Amendment provides for equal protection of the law for all citizens. Due process requires both the federal and state government to respect all rights, guarantees, and protections that are presented in the Constitution before the government can deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. The purpose of adhering to due process during judicial proceedings is to guarantee that a criminal will receive a fair, orderly, and just proceeding. So the question is, uh... Does an average person understand the uh, due process? And I suspect that people generally don't understand due process. That they either think that government can take whatever they want, whenever they want, 
especially when related to life, liberty, or property, or that government can never deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. And I don't think they understand the mechanism that is within the Constitution, specifically the 5th and 14th Amendment due process clauses, about what the government can and can't do and the process by which they are allowed to take away life, for instance, the death penalty, take away liberty, for instance, um, a prison sentence, or take away property, um, for instance, by eminent domain, which is the taking of private property for uh, public use under the Fifth Amendment. There are two types of due process in the Constitution, procedural and substantive, but the question arises of whether or not procedural or substantive due process is more important in capital punishment cases. Due process can have sort of two, two components. Substantive due process, which is depriving a person of a fundamental right. And the fundamental right that exists here is the person's right to life. So substantive due process speaks to, can the government um, deprive a person of their life? And then substance, uh, procedural due process speaks to the procedure by which a person is notified and then have their opportunity to be heard in order for the government to deprive the person of that fundamental right to life. I'm not sure that the question can be answered which one is more important. Um, they're both very important because we're speaking about a fundamental right deprivation. At the, at, at the initial question is, can the government deprive a person of that? And at the second question is, if they can, then what process must they follow? What procedure must the government follow in order to be certain that a person has had the appropriate notice and opportunity to be heard before the deprivation of that fundamental right? Capital punishment does violate the due process clause of the Constitution. First, trials are not fair because the outcome of capital punishment usually relies on how much money the individual being tried has, the skill of their attorney, where the crime took place, and sometimes the ethnicity of both the defendant and the victim. Second, capital punishment is irrevocable, which eliminates the criminal's ability to appeal as well as the criminal's choice of benefiting from new evidence or new laws that could warrant a reversal in their sentence or even conviction. Lastly, capital punishment does not guarantee equal protection of the law because it is not applied uniformly. The federal government and state governments have different statutes that allow the use of the death penalty. More importantly, it is hard to eliminate the racial biases and other prejudice within juries. It is hard to protect the rights of people when using the death penalty, which is why over 140 nations have decided to abolish it. If over 140 nations have decided to abolish the death penalty, why does the United States still have it? Our society values life, so why are we inclined to punish someone by ending their life? If our justice system really wants to stay away from an eye for an eye justice system, we must abolish the death penalty.